You're listening to On Guard, where we chop it up with everyday people who do extraordinary things. If you're inspired by what you hear, all I ask is that you give us a follow and share with a friend. Today's guest is Mo Bogini, the lovely. Bo is the world's first AI sports analyst. Since 2017, he's been building Ollie Up, an incredible cutting edge AI software that will change the face of the fitness industry. Bo knows more about AI than anyone I've ever met. I'm extremely excited for you guys to hear what he has to say. I basically haven't slept since Friday. Uh, why? <laughs> that's what you, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> Since Friday? Uh, 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 yeah, I'm not sure if you're paying attention to what's going on right now in AI. Do, do you have any idea what's going on? No, I had a crazy weekend, so I haven't, I haven't been What happened? <laughs> Ooh, so, you know the company OpenAI? You know OpenAI? Do you know OpenAI? Yeah, ChatGPT. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah ChatGPT, the company behind ChatGPT. Well, the company decided, the board of directors decided to fire Sam Altman, who's the, who's the CEO. Okay. And... Let's let's just say the company is about to implode because really let's just say the company is about to implode and Microsoft might basically Microsoft at this point as we're speaking right now is most likely going to take all of the employees right now from OpenAI and like actually make a new subsidiary department within microsoft to actually continue all of the work that OpenAI has been doing under microsoft so that's that's the that's the that's the situation we are right now in and it's like most of my infrastructure for my application is built around <laughs> open ai i see so I'm, I'm 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 a little flustered right now the situation is still ongoing of course so i'm, I'm paying very close attention to what what the situation, how the situation is going to develop. And in, in my, from my point of view, I think the board of directors should resign mm -hmm. because it, they just show that they just don't really understand what's going on. They, they don't really understand the, the company and what it's trying to do and what this really means for the rest of the world, not just open AI, because it's not just open AI, it's affecting everybody. And most importantly, <laughs> I'm not entirely too sure if they're really paying attention to what regulators and the government people are like, because because you know like these companies are like AI companies have pretty much been pushing this narrative of uh, regulation safety for AI, mm -hmm. but due to the events that's happening right now in in open AI, it just shows that they they don't have they they don't share the same respect for themselves. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's 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 really interesting how governments and regulators are going to take what's going on right now so i think it's a very pivotal moment uh, that we're having right now in ai just for the world mm -hmm. to see what's what's about to happen so I'm, I'm just very very curious um what's going to happen moving forward uh, after these after these events after the dust has settled yeah i didn't know that oh. like happened at all like <laughs> You should have been more in the loop. Uh, wow. Don't worry about it. You saved yourself a good weekend. <laughs> yeah, that sounds that sounds stressful. I, I didn't even know why they fire him. Did they say or did they just like put out yeah, a formal so statement? The sit situation is still ongoing. Mm -hmm. They haven't really they haven't really mentioned why they. Well, I mean they, they did mention in the report like so because they did release a statement on Friday. Mm -hmm. about why they fired him but you know it's very corporate so yeah. it's in a very corporate way so that open air doesn't become liable for being sued so they, they use these fancy words so that they're not very much liable and they're just pretty much saying that sam uh just didn't communicate very well which i think is well i mean i don't i, I have a lot of respect for sam mm -hmm. and i i pay a lot of it i pay close attention to a lot of talks and podcasts that he goes in and I think he's very well articulated in how he communicates with everybody. Mm -hmm. So I think he's good willed. I think he's very good willed. Yeah. Um, whenever, when it comes, when especially when it comes to the subject of AI and how it's going to impact us and AGI. So I don't really trust uh, the board and their intentions at yeah. this point, from from my perspective. It's just interesting to me because I didn't know. Like I've, I obviously use ChatGPT. Like it's a very integral part of my workflow, but for the most part, I'm not. I guess I'm not as heavily involved in it as you are. You know what I mean? Because it's not my direct, I guess, yeah. occupation. And you're the, the, you said you're a uh, AI sports analyst. I want to get into that yeah. later. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Um, 
I think it's interesting seeing how effective it can be when a big company, because it's, didn't my, Microsoft uh, invested a lot of money into them, right? Oh yeah, ten billion dollars. Yeah, so I was gonna say that that would make sense <laughs> they would take over. So it's just interesting to see like a company that is now fairly massive kind of turn over, and I I wasn't even aware. Like, <laughs> which I think is even more interesting that there's yeah, probably yeah, yeah. tons and, and going on. Pretty much, they're, they're pretty much at the top of the AI game. So like, yeah. no other AI research lab at this point is where uh, is where Open AI is in terms of their models capabilities. Yeah. So it's like. And that's why I'm saying it's super interesting to see how governments and regulators are going to look at this because open AI is the leader, right? And if this is happening right now with open AI, I'm telling you, the governments and all these regulators are gonna take swift action. What do you think they'll do? Like what do you what do you kind of predict in that sense? I think the so um, I'm, I'm actually not entirely too sure how well you follow the events in AI, but there's two camps of people. Mm -hmm. there, there are people that are for closed source models. So it's like what OpenAI is doing in terms of not actually releasing their models for the world to actually play around with. So it's like they're safeguarding the actual AI, mm -hmm. but people can still access it, but we're not, but they're not giving it to you. Okay. And then there's, then, and then there's the open source community which anybody can actually take the models and actually like actually see what's going on within the models and actually fine tune and actually do the things with them, right? Mm -hmm. So there's two camps. I think there's gonna be a much bigger, much bigger focus on open sourcing mm -hmm. and actually regulating these models in an open source structure rather than a closed source for where an actual company Essentially, the closed source models. I'm, I'm not in. I, I don't have a lot of confidence mm -hmm. in, in companies actually safeguarding the actual AI models because, if anything, OpenAI has shown me at this point is that I can't trust a company uh, with with the types of AI models that they provide for us developers or or pretty much anybody in the world right now to actually use for the types of products that we want. We as developers or or, or business owners actually want to use within our companies. So you think the longevity of a closed source is a lot less than open because there's not a lot of customization when they kind of do safeguard that information? Yeah, it's that and also AGI, right? So would you would you trust, like personally, would you trust the future of humanity? Because essentially with AGI, we're essentially introducing a new species mm -hmm. into this world. Would you trust that type of responsibility to a company that like open air and what's happening right now i personally i don't uh, yeah because i guess they are i mean they're not like creating life but they're i feel like on the way to it maybe because even <laughs> yeah. if you look at how much it's scaled in even the last like six months the it's probably it's one of the insane. fastest growing things ever right so yeah, i feel it's like insane. it's interesting like you know i feel like we're notoriously bad at um kind of predicting where things will go. You know what I mean? Like, we will we'll always kind of jump at an opportunity and, you know, just kind of feel it out. And then while it kind of grows, all the mistakes it makes, we're kind of like, oh, then we try to fix them as they go, but we, we can never yeah, catch up, you know? Yeah, fix them as they go. <laughs> so I feel well, like... It's the, it's, it's the normal tech thing, right? It's yeah. like move fast and break things fast and then we fix them later. It's But I'm not entirely too sure if that model, that same model works with AI because... Yeah. The, I, I think the the implications for moving fast and breaking fast just doesn't work very well with AI. It's, it's, it's very different. It's very different. Because it's like, it's going to be probably one of the most like used things ever. That's my guess. I think once, well, it, now that we have access, I don't think, I couldn't imagine like even only using it, like, and I, I use it extremely less than you. Like I still, it's such a big part of my, day just yeah. now so i think even I'll, in its infancy i'll tell I'll, I'll tell you something ever since i started using things like a like chat gpt inside of my own workflows for doing research and like all the administrative work that i do as a researcher mm -hmm. because i recently just finished just to tell you a little bit about myself yeah tell us more about I'm it a, I'm, I'm a recent master's graduate right okay, so great, it's like yeah. I, I literally graduated in may okay. of my master's in computer science mm -hmm. and it's like I personally cannot 
go back to how I used to work mm -hmm. without ChatGPT and all of these other AI systems. I think I think the way I used to work and do my things is just way too inefficient. So what do you do? Like what type of like if you don't mind sharing, like what's your like your little secret? Like what kind of AIs are you using and how are you using them to kind of progress your workflow? Um, so I mean, I, I can't share too much about my, uh, I, I will share my research, but mm -hmm. I can't go into specifics with my methods. Yeah, no worries. Because because that, that that is really where the secrets, Yeah, that's where the secrets actually are. But I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, a sort of a framing mm -hmm. that I use. It, it's much better. It's much better if I give you a framework to how I think about these AI models mm -hmm. that I see I'm, a lot of people not a lot of people don't think about these AI models the same way as I do from, 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 what, I've, from what I've seen. And generally, I, I, I sort of look at these things as, uh, first of all, they're ideation machines. They're very great for generating ideas, mm -hmm. right? And all you have to do in order to generate an idea from something like ChatGPT is ask a good question. Just ask a question to your problem. It can be any problem inside of your life. You just need to formulate a question around that problem and ask it to ChatGPT, and it can give you multiple ideas on how you, you as a person, can actually solve, right? So first of all, it's an ideation machine. Mm -hmm. Now, once you've gotten your idea, now you can actually start drilling down into the actual idea that ChatGPT or one of these AI systems has given you. So now we're going into the reasoning aspect of these AI systems, which I think is even more powerful than the ideation side of it. Because now you can actually understand, you can gain a much bigger, you can gain a much better picture as to which decision you actually want to make from the vast ideas that it's going to give you. Right, you can you can actually ask even deeper questions as to okay, why did you give me this idea or this solution to the problem that I gave you? It's gonna it's gonna give you it's gonna give you a response, and you can keep on going back and forth and asking it all sorts of questions. So now you can start building out this much bigger picture for each of those ideas. Mm. And let's say and let's say you've picked up about five of those those ideas. Well now you now well now you can actually sample from those ideas with all of, with with this much big with a, with this greater understanding of each of them so that you can actually make a better decision. So I'm I'm very data driven because mm -hmm. I mean if you're an AI researcher, you, you have to be data driven because the name of the game in AI is data, right? Mm -hmm. Ninety percent of the battle that you're fighting as an AI researcher is data. It's all data related. You can't do anything without data. And that is how you actually make progress and train these models, evaluate and test them. And you can actually make data-driven data decisions. So I'm all about that life. Interesting. Um, yeah. So that's how I kind of think of them. So I'll, I'll give you another example, because you know I do write a lot of grants, so mm -hmm. like funding grants. And because I'm still, I'm, I still reside like at the university that I'm at, mm -hmm. so I, I see a lot of students on how they use ChatGPT, and I'm like, no, this this is not how you use ChatGPT in order to your, to write your assignments. If you write your, because I was also a, I was also a TA, right? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so it's, it's very easy to tell the people that use ChatGPT and the people that don't. And yeah. it's like if you use a ChatGPT and if I walk in there, I see it, oh man, you are getting a straight zero. Yeah. But the way to use these types these types of systems whenever you're, you're you're doing like your assignments is okay you get your question you mm -hmm. write a short draft of your answer to the question mm -hmm. right a short draft and then you feed that draft into ChatGPT and you're like ChatGPT can you rewrite this draft that I've given you for this question in the style that I've written in it in it and now. Now you're onto something because now I can't easily track whether if this is an AI response or not. So it's you kind of, what I'm saying? yeah, the way to come back, because I know Grammarly actually incorporated some AI features like that. Like you can uh, highlight, and I, I use it sometimes when I'm trying to, if I have a very similar message I have to write like a bunch of times, I'll just kind of message and then like, you'll have, you know, the six to 40, whatever drafts to uh, kind of rotate yeah. through. So I think 
it's interesting because you'll you'll hear you know as as a college student myself you'll kind of hear people like you know oh you should have and I like I know that they're not taking the you know extra five minutes to at least tweak it a little bit because like ChatGPT it writes like it's it's human like but it's not human and it, like you said it's very easy to tell. No, so it's, I, <laughs> it's interesting, yeah. And then I'll I'll, I'll tell you something. Uh, this is just food for thought, and mm-hmm. this is just something that I want you to think about with these types of AI systems. There is your primary brain, so it's like your brain, mm-hmm. and I, I want a lot of people to start thinking of ChatGPT as their second brain. Now you need to train your second brain in order to solve your problems, but you never ever allow your secondary brain to override your primary brain, if that makes sense. Oh yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So you're always using your primary brain to filter out if your second brain is actually giving you actual, like really good information for you to actually move forward with your problem. So does that kind of go back to you using ChatGPT, for instance, as like an idea machine rather than an answer exactly, machine? Exactly, exactly. Okay. It's an ideation and a reasoning tool for my for my primary brain to process the information. Interesting. So that I can actually make the decision with my mm-hmm. primary brain. So that's how I that's how I that's how I use these 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 systems. So would you? Because you, I looked a little bit, you know, just research myself, and you have a a sports analyst AI called. Oli up is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, yeah, it's Oli up. Oli up. Okay, so tell us about that. It's very interesting. Like you know, I'll, I'll link the website below, but it's a yeah. very it's a very intriguing. I looked at the page and the things just like talk about the capabilities, like anything because you said it was in development for four years. Is that, is that correct? The entire if you look at the entire history of Oli up, yes, four okay. years. In- <laughs> it's wow. been. But the current rendition, the current version of Oli up that you're looking at, I started developing that in. May. I okay. started development of that in May, and I finished in August. Okay. And then, from August until early October, I, I was just doing a lot of testing. Mm-hmm. I was doing a lot of testing, and I was actually just trying to really figure out what is the best experience here for my users. And that's when I actually came up with the comprehensive guide. We're gonna get into that. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but yeah, I, I generally would just want to talk a little bit about Alia. So there's a whole other side of me that I haven't even talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I've talked about the AI research. So I am an AI researcher. I, I do know how to train, evaluate, and train AI systems. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is just something I've been doing for very long. I started my, my AI journey in 2017. Oh, wow, okay, um, interesting. That's, that, that's when I officially got started off the ground with AI. And it, AI looked very, very different in 2017 to how it is right now. Um, it's very interesting to see how AI has evolved over the last six years since I since I got involved. But yeah, so I know a lot about AI. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot about AI. After six years, yeah. Nah. Okay, so I'm also a strength and conditioning coach. So at the university at the, that I'm at, I was a strength and conditioning intern. Okay. But I also ran an Olympic weightlifting club within okay. strength and conditioning. So within the student population, I would actually recruit certain students to actually compete within the club and then I'll train them and then we'll go and compete. I'm actually, I, I, I've actually got a scheduled competition with some of my weightlifters this, this coming weekend. Oh, but anyways, I've been, I've been deeply involved within sports, the sports performance side of, you know, like uh, of sports for seven years at this point. So I'll, I'd like to think that I know my stuff mm-hmm. and I know the industry very well. Okay, yeah. And, and, and most importantly, I know the mindset of sports professionals because mm-hmm. that's the most important thing. That I know the mindset of sports professionals and how they react to new technology. That's very important. I'm going to get into that. Um, so Oliap, of course, comes from Olympics. <laughs> so, of course, the Oli side of it. <laughs> okay, right? okay. Oli, Olympics. Okay, because, that makes you know, sense. I'm, I understand that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm an Olympic weightlifter. And, yeah, yeah. You know, and then up, the up of Oliap comes from the cue that I use the most whenever I'm coaching one of my athletes. Oh, I so, see. So, weightlifting is all about getting the bar above your head, mm-hmm. right? So, you got the snatch and you got the clean and drip. Yeah. Both of those movements 
all about getting it's 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 really just getting the power out. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the only thing you need to be thinking about. Mm -hmm. You should not be thinking about anything else yeah. other than getting that power straight up. And literally. So it's like I use that word up the most. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> and it happened when I was in the shower. Like most of my great ideas actually come when I'm in the shower. Okay. <laughs> And one of these days, oh, uh, it was a really long time ago, but I was in the shower, like I was in the shower in the, the last year of my undergrad, which was like 2020. Mm -hmm. I was in the shower and then that that's really when I came up with the name Ollie Up. So I, I, I literally just, I was thinking about the Olympics mm -hmm. and I was like, mm, Olympics, so Ollie. Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, up. And then I was like, Ollie up. And then I was like, okay, that that sounds good. Yeah. And then I slept on it. And then the next day I was like, okay, Ollie up. This is the name. Fantastic. And then that's yeah. how that that's how it started. I think there's something creative about showers. Like I, a lot of times, like you know, I feel like people who are invested in what they do are constantly thinking about the thing. Like no matter what, you know. Yeah. I think if yeah. literally anyone, it's if they, right. yeah, it's if they've right. ever 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 been obsessed and passionate about something it is all you think about for uh, waking hours you know what i mean so i feel like it's, it, a lot of times i feel like in a shower is a place it's an environment without a lot of distractions you know you have like yourself some soap and water so it's very hard yeah, to get distracted it's, it's a thinking time you know shower thoughts so i think it's very interesting how so many good ideas even of mine you know have come from just standing there and being like hmm, yeah, like just covering the shower <laughs> it's exactly. crazy like literally almost everything Everything about my research has come from the shower. At, at least that's where most, I'll probably say that's where I've probably cleared most of my, my thoughts is in the shower. So, you know, you came up with the yeah. name and where'd you kind of go from there? Like you said you started in May. So, well, I guess well, this was 2020, so it would have been a little yeah, bit earlier. So that's, yeah, so that's a little, well, okay, I'm jumping a bit. So, of course, I started in 2019 mm -hmm. and this is how Ali have really started. So at least I've told you about my strength, my strength training history. So I was in my undergrad mm -hmm. in my last year in 2019. And I came to this inflection point where I was coaching too much. And I was also doing a double major within computer science and business. Mm, okay. Now I'm an international student, so I'm, I'm in Canada right now. So I'm an international student and I'm from Zimbabwe okay. and my parents, my my parents pay a lot of money for me to be here mm -hmm. and they and the thing about african parents is that the only thing they care about is grades they don't really care about anything else mm -hmm. so my grades were pretty much falling down and i was paying a lot of money to be here so that wasn't going to go down so i had to make a decision but because i know a lot of computer science and i know how to develop a lot of applications i know machine learning and no algorithms, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm a computer scientist. The nice thing about being a computer scientist is that you can automate your life, mm -hmm. yeah. essentially. Yeah. <laughs> essentially, right? So I was like, okay, let me take all of the training programs that I've ever made for all of my athletes and let me make a machine learning algorithm out of all of this that can spit out training programs for me on the fly. Right. I did that, and that's pretty much how the inception of Alia began. It was a very simple machine learning algorithm, classification model. Actually, it was a multi-class classification model. I, I remember, oh man, that was nasty. <laughs> I still remember that. Um, Would you want to, could you go a little more in depth for people who don't know what, like the the terminology, kind of like give a little uh, description for the, the vocab, because I have no idea what you're talking about. Like I, I kind of understand <laughs> machine learning, but... I obviously don't have the six years of experience. Okay, 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 okay. I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll simplify it. Just think of machine learning as this. There's regression models, which handles numbers. Okay. Right? And then there's classification models that handle text. Okay. Training programs are text-based, mm -hmm. right? They're text-based. So, and it's not regression-based. So it's not numbers-based. Of course, there are numbers inside of training programs because you've got three sets mm -hmm. of how many reps, but it's really text, mm -hmm. right? So the most logical thing to do is to use classification. That That's a very baseline, a, bit, a very good overview 
of machine learning is that there's regression models and there's classification. Regression models use numbers, mm -hmm. strictly numbers, and it's all about predicting the next word. So it's like in the stock market per se, right? Mm -hmm. That's all numbers. You probably use a regression model to pretty much predict what your stock price is going to be and like, well, tomorrow or a month from now, mm -hmm. right? And then there's your keyboard. So it's like you have this autocomplete thing with your keyboard, right? Mm -hmm. That's classic. Okay. Right? So you have the okay. multi-class system set up and then what? <laughs> okay, and then I did that. And then I got it working. Mm -hmm. It made my life a lot easier. And then towards the end of my undergrad, I showed my, my master supervisor the machine learning model that I made. Mm -hmm. And he was very intrigued. He was like, wait, wait, wait. You're an undergrad. You made a machine learning model for training, yeah. <laughs> which is which is pretty much unheard of at mm -hmm. this point. Because this is like 2019. This is pretty much unheard of at oh, this yeah, point. Oh, yeah, because I feel like a lot of people didn't even know it. I, yeah, I was <laughs> a thing yet until yeah, well, it was this year. There, right? So it's like, you've got a lot of potential. I want you inside of the master's program. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that I, at the, at the time, I had, let's just say I did not enjoy my undergrad experience. Okay, yeah. <laughs> let's just say I did not enjoy my undergrad experience. And at the time, in my fourth year, I was really questioning why universities exist. Okay, I, I can understand right? that, yeah. <laughs> right, I was really questioning, so I was very apprehensive about joining the master's program. It, it actually took a little bit of time for my master's supervisor to actually recruit me uh, into the master's program. But how he persuaded me was he said, okay, okay, Bo, because people call me Bo mm -hmm. because they can't really pronounce my name. So yeah. he was like, okay, Bo, okay. the school is going to fund your entire master's degree and any other funding, any other funding grants that you get will all go to your to your project. So it, it won't go to the school, it'll be all yours. Interesting, wow. And, and, that, was, and that was very enticing. Mm -hmm. and that's really when I started really thinking, okay, this is, yeah. I don't think I wanna, go, I don't think I'm ready to go into the job labor market at the moment. I think there's still a lot of skills that, that I want to like really cal captivate. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I think I'm just gonna pounce on this and I'm, I'm gonna see where this goes. Great, now, yeah. I think I think I made looking back I think I made absolutely the right decision because mm -hmm. to date I have secured well over $200,000 in terms of like research grants which mm -hmm. has like helped me tremendously stay yeah. alive up to this point of course of course <laughs> because because it's been it's been it's been <laughs> Oh man, it's it's been a battle. Yeah, it's it is. It's been a battle, guys. And like only up, as I said, like only up looked very different in twenty nineteen to mm -hmm. how it looks like today. Now I'm I'm gonna jump a little bit of a gap, and I'm uh, I'm just gonna say like the when I when I got enrolled inside of the master's degree. I had to, of course, I had to make my my, my thesis proposal, and I was like, okay. Like, okay, it's it's cool that I've made this algorithm that mm -hmm. can spit out training program. Like, this is cool. But the problem with this algorithm that I've made is that it actually doesn't understand the complexities involved in actually making training programs, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. it actually doesn't under, it can spit out training programs, which are mine, which is very biased. Mm -hmm. I'm very biased as a as a as a as an athlete, as, as a as a coach that makes training programs. So it's making training programs in my style, right? Mm -hmm. But it also didn't understand the actual mechanics that go behind actually making training programs, which is a big problem, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, rather than making like further exploring these types of AI models that can just spit out training programs why don't I actually try to actually make these AI models actually understand the inner mechanics that actually go into making a training program. So this is now actually like, now we're going into the territory mm -hmm. of exercise science and sports science. Interesting, right? yeah. And up to this point, I also didn't have like formal education yeah. in human kinetics and kinesiology. So it was very interesting. So it's like 2020, 2021, we're just, boots on the ground, really trying to understand the literature in sports science, 
and most importantly, exercise science. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's true. I may be, I may have been a coach at that point, but I, I didn't, I wasn't deeply invested inside of the literature mm -hmm. within exercise. I only knew the principles that actually, so it's like, it's the applied stuff. Like, you know, the applied stuff, but you don't actually understand how things actually got to where they are. So mm -hmm. that's, so I was really just trying to fill in that background information just to like really, really understand uh, the literature, which, which is not fun. Yeah. You know, I would say 2020, 2021 were not very fun years uh, for me, but they've definitely paid off. They've definitely paid off. So I'll say 2020, 2021 were very reading, they're very re heavy reading focused. Well, those were, those were the COVID years, right? So I feel like yeah, those 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 are the COVID. That's years. a lot of time indoors, and I feel like, you know, I can tell that you're a very hard worker. You know, obviously, like, knowing as someone who you know the the grind, the hustle, everything like that, it's you can kind of tell when someone has also put in the hours. You know what I mean? You just like it's <laughs> yeah. And I know you know what you're talking about, but also knowing the hours each day and day out they have to put in, and how exhausting and lonely that can be, and especially with the added loneliness of COVID. I can I can see how twenty. I mean, I wasn't even involved in anything of sub, like anything oh. substantial during those years, and I had a tough time. So I think I, it's very. I, I, uh, I think I, I think the worst part about the COVID years was the impact that it had on my own personal training mm -hmm. because oh, I, I couldn't go to the gym because all the gyms are pretty much closed mm -hmm. and you're pretty much restricted. Cause I'm an Olympic weightlifter myself too, so it's like I also coach and I also train. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you gotta. You, I go to the gym as well. It's you, the, you the best. To, yeah. right? You have to train. So it's like those restricted hours had a, a very negative impact on my mental health. I'll probably mm -hmm. I had so many mental breakdowns. Yeah. <laughs> 2020, 2021, like so many, and I haven't even told. Like not not a lot of people know. Like a lot of people in my personal life, not they they don't even know. <laughs> The amount of uh, mental breakdowns that I've had uh, up to this point. Well, it's... Everybody, everybody thinks that everybody thinks I'm doing great, but, yeah. <laughs> but they don't understand. <laughs> exactly. I think being at a point like it's going to be very rare where you find someone else like you. You know what I mean? Like not a lot of people yeah. have the experience. Like I don't think I even like I thought AI was still in like, movies in 2017. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's not a movie. Exactly. So just you're you're ahead of the curve and I feel it's gonna be hard to kind of find people to communicate and you know, you're probably having very specific problems that you, you can't yeah. really like look that up. You know what I mean? You can't be like, how to do this because no one's pretty much done it before. Yeah. So I feel yeah. like that can be very taxing, especially having to learn an entire sports science on top of that. So yeah. I can kind so, of understand so, your... <laughs> so so, 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 so I'll, t I'll, I'll tell you something and mm -hmm. we'll probably jump a little bit over here because you just touched on something very important. So my supervisor, my master supervisor, has not helped me a single dime okay. throughout my whole entire master's project because the only thing he understands is the computer science side of things. Mm -hmm. He does not understand the exercise science of things. And even if I do go to the exercise science people, they don't understand the, the computer science side of things. Mm, okay. You see you see where the problem yeah. is? And, and what I'm doing, in, in research is called interdisciplinary research, mm -hmm. which means I'm combining two research fields together. And I didn't understand that entirely until I got into my thesis defense, which I successfully defended mm -hmm. um, last year, October. I can't even call my thesis defense a thesis defense because that was really just a presentation. Mm -hmm. nobody, nobody had any questions Oh, they, they had questions to, to actually like really see if I knew what I was talking about, but nobody really understood. Like the types of questions people were giving me were very surface level. Mm -hmm. Nobody actually like really drilled down into like the actual inner workings. So so I'm, we're, we're pretty much at this point, or I'll, I'll probably say I'm at this point with my research where I'm sa it's safe to say that I'm actually carving out a whole new area of research within 
computer science and sports science, which is which is pretty interesting. Yeah. And and what I will say, and now we're gonna start talking a little bit about my research. Um, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna we're, I'm just trying to think about how to actually tackle this topic. No, it is it is tricky because I feel like you know what you're talking about, <laughs> but like you said, there's not I've never met a you know AI sports <laughs> like that's not a like you're kind yeah, of inventing so. a new thing, so it's gonna be hard to kind of yeah, give so, the prerequisites. Okay, so, so 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 we're going to start off with the ba- the fundamentals here, which is we're gonna start off on the training side of things. So as a coach, whenever you're making a training program, you need to abide by specific policies and rules whenever you're making a very good training program for your athletes because that training program that you're making for your athletes it needs to be safe and you need to make sure that you're mitigating the risk of injuries right so that's the first thing that's those that's your first objective as a coach whenever you're making a training program is this is this program that i'm making for my athletes safe and is it mitigating the risk of injury the secondary function right of making a training program is maximizing i don't like using maximizing but some people like it's it's between maximizing or optimizing the performance of an athlete of an athlete athletic attributes Mm -hmm. right so that's the secondary function and all of this falls under so whenever you're making your training program you're using specific methodologies and those methodologies can be pretty much summed up into this term that's called periodization Right, which is a systematic approach to actually making training programs which are safe and actually maximize or optimize the athletic attributes to your athletes. Mm-hmm. So periodization. So I'm just I'm just explaining to you the, the history here of training programs and how they've been made. Mm-hmm. So periodization as a thing. was probably first coined in the early 1960s. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe a little earlier, maybe a little earlier, probably like World War One, that era. Maybe, maybe. I, I know the general concepts of periodization really started coming off of in, in, in World War One because like you have like a lot of these soldiers that are coming from these wars, and then you have like all of these doctors and then you're really just trying to actually re- like actually make like exercise routines to actually make sure that they actually recover and go back on the field. So that's really when the field really started, right? And this, yeah, whole, yeah, yeah. this whole idea of actually making training programs. Of course, it, it like really, really developed a lot in the, in the 90s, but the most progress that, that has been made in the field, especially when it comes to making tra- the methodologies of periodization, I'll probably say really stopped in the 1970s when the Soviet Union fell, right? Because the Soviet Union up to that point was pretty much the powerhouse it had. It had all of the best sports scientists in the world that you can think of. They were the people that were actually like really driving the field forward. But when the Soviet Union died, that's really when progress within exercise science really stalled. Mm -hmm. So now we're stuck. Now, in the current in the current day and age, we're still stuck with using training methods from the 1970s. Like, what the hell has happened over the last 50 years, right? Yeah. With all of with all of the technological advancements that that has happened. So this 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 is the question I've been trying to ask myself and understand why things haven't progressed so much with methodologies for making better training programs for athletes. So up to this point, we're still stuck with three types of periodization methods. So there's linear training pro, um, periodization methods, which you know things happen in a very linear fashion. Mm-hmm. You're progressing your athletes in a very linear fashion. And this is best suited for beginners. So if you're a really beginner, this is most likely your go-to method. And then there's non-linear methods, which of course it's in the name. Yeah. It's not as linear and structured mm-hmm. as a linear, uh, a linear approach to making a training program. And this is probably best suited for your advanced people, right? So it's like your, your, 
your, your intermediate to advanced types of people, people who are no longer in that beginner stage and they're actually starting to grasp and really understand that mind-body connection between you and, the, and, and how you train. So you're a lot more aware of your body and how you train, right? And then there's block periodization methods, which is best suited for your elite athletes because elite athletes are competing year in, like they have like so many competitions in a year, you can make a training program for like 12 or even for like six months or something because they're competing like weekly or, yeah. or bi-weekly, right? So it's like the structure of how you create training programs for elite athletes is very, very different than people who don't compete very uh, often. Right, so we use a much more blocked periodization style, so that they're always refreshed, and it's it's really more like a maintenance. I shouldn't say it's maintenance. Really, there's different. There's different. Mm -hmm. There's different ways of going about it. You can either you can either do a maintenance type of thing, or you can try and actually like um, optimize the actual performance attributes. I'm not gonna go into deep with that. But anyways, was was stuck with these traditional, I'm gonna, I'm gonna name them these traditional methods, right? These are methods that have been made by human beings. And the problem with human made things is that we as human beings are very biased and we don't have all of the information in the world to actually make the best type of decision. Mm -hmm. So I'm, lo I'm looking at, because I know so much about data, and all of these things. I'm looking at these traditional approaches to how these sports scientists in the olden days were doing their things. And I'm just like, this is not the approach. The world that we're living in right now is very, very different. We're collecting so much data about our athletes and we know so much more about training. Now, we as human beings can process all of this information that, that we're collecting and gathering and trying to analyze. We as humans, we are not designed to pretty much consume all of this data and make the best possible decision. But you know what is designed for this? Computers are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so now I'm trying to use all of this data that we're collecting about all of our addicts and everything that we now know about training and I'm feeding it into an AI and I'm hoping and you know, a lot of my research right now, you should really go onto all the app right now and read like my research page just to really understand what I'm gonna be doing. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna talk about it. But all I'm trying to say here is that I'm about to coin a new, a new branch of periodization methods. There's a reason why I call the periodization methods traditional. Mm -hmm. So this traditional periodization methods, I'm about to coin a new branch and that's called algorithmic periodization methods. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's a whole new entire branch. So I'm literally, I'm literally creating a whole new field by myself at this point. Um, and have you heard of anyone else that, or do you have? Oh, there, 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 there's no one, there's, there's no one. But trust me, I've been looking, I've been looking for the last four years. There, there, nice. There's nothing in the research. There's nothing in the research. Wow. There's nobody, there's nobody's working. Nobody's doing remotely anything remotely close to what I, every, I'll, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. <laughs> Because I'm now on Twitter. Yeah, I'm yeah. now on Twitter and I'm connected with a lot more sports scientists mm -hmm. than, than I've ever been. And I go to the I go into a lot of these discussions with sports scientists and they're just all looking at me like, what the hell is AI? And I'm just like, Well, you guys are just you guys are in the dark ages the same way as people in sport are. You're just as conservative minded as people in sport are. You you're too scared to actually dive deep into what's going on in AI and yeah. help AI do your research for you. Well, I've embraced AI and, and technology and I'm going to do this. And I'm gonna show you guys how research is actually done with computer, with the knowledge of knowing algorithms and AI. Well, I think that's absolutely fantastic because I, <laughs> I, a lot of people, they see AI and you know even teachers are terrified of it because you know they're like, well, it's not like it's not like people will be saying it's not fair like we didn't have that but you know when you were alive you know when you were in school we didn't have phones so it's like why are we not 
taking something so powerful and utilizing it and incorporating it like you are into sports and just in everyday life because it's going to enhance our growth by, you know, tenfold. 20, like, it's, it's incredible. I mean, you, you just said something with teachers and, and AI and, like, the older days. So what were teachers back in the day like when the calculator was first, was first made, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, because it's the same thing. Exactly, yeah. Now, now, now look, now look. Calculators are, are widely used in the classroom today. Mm -hmm. The same thing is going to be the same with AI. We just need to adapt. Yeah. That's all that it is. And do you think that there's... Do you think that they'll... Like you said they're, at the beginning of this, they're regulating kind of the open source. And do you think that open source regulation is going to somehow affect the way it's used in schools? Or like, what do you kind of predict? Because you have your... Because I'm... If there's not someone exactly doing what you are doing in a field, you know, with your, uh, you, you call it inter, what was it? The, oh, what, what? You're like, you, you, the, you're researching two things at once, whatever the, the, the. Oh, in, in, interdisciplinary research. Yeah, you're inter, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to repeat that, but you have that, and I'm, I'm sure there's someone out there that's doing interpretation there, I'm, that's incredible that you can pronounce that, <laughs> research with you know, maybe not AI and sports science, but maybe AI and, you know, just another field. And I feel like those yeah. people, so, like I have... Are very rare. Researchers that do interdisciplinary research yeah. are very rare. They're very rare. Mm -hmm. right? you, don't, it's, you don't find... It's very hard to find people that are domain experts in mm -hmm. two things yeah. and are actually combining them. It's very rare to find those types of researchers. So I, I, I'm very rare is what I'm trying to say to you. <laughs> well, I mean, but I feel like once you kind of, because, you know, it's, it are, is already pretty developed, but I think, you know, there's always more to improve on, always more to uh, critique. And I think once you get into kind of like the stride, and I feel like it has, what you're describing is something so widespread, especially with the burst in gym culture. You know what I mean? Like even aside from Olympic and elite athletes, the, you know, potential for integration with, just regular people that want to, you know, because I feel like personal trainers, you could completely automate their job, you know, like, okay, 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 you okay, could. okay, okay, we're, we're, we're getting into a discussion here, because you just touched on something here, which is like super, super important that, this, and this is something that I, that I, that I really, I, I really want to start talking about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I want you to think of AI as this. Mm -hmm. This, this, this is the kind of AI that we have. Think of ChatGPT or even Alia or whatever AI systems that you're going to be like interacting with, mm -hmm. right? Like from this point onwards going forward, they are pretty much the collective intelligence of humanity. They understand everything mm -hmm. about humanity up to this point. Like you can pretty much ask it anything and it, it'll, it'll tell you, mm -hmm. right? Now, why am I telling you this? Well, it's super interesting because now I realize that, okay, AI understands everything about the world and everything that we've done. That means it understands everything up to this point about sports science mm -hmm. and exercise science, right? It understands all of that. The only thing I have to do now is actually look at how well it actually understands it mm -hmm. and actually improve its capabilities mm -hmm. for answering questions related to sports. Now, I call it sports performance. Now, what is sports performance? So currently, if you were to ask any type of coach what sports performance is, they probably wouldn't give you like a really good answer to what that term really is. Most people up to this point think sports performance is just fitness. Sports performance is not just fitness. Sport performance falls down into five things. It's fitness. It's skill acquisition, so which means like actually learning how to perform exercises properly and execute them well without getting injured. There is the recovery component and injury management component of sport performance, right? Mm -hmm. There's the mental cognition side of sports. So it's like how mentally prepared are you to actually perform at a competitive level or to actually step onto the stage and perform. So mental cognition, and then there's the nutrition aspect of sport. So these are the five pillars, the holy, the holy trinity. No, it's not trinity. It's it's, it's the five pillars. Yeah, the, the, the quintuplet. 
It was the five pillars yeah. of sport performance that give you a very holistic approach to training. Most people don't understand this. And I'm trying to educate. I'm essentially I'm trying to redefine mm -hmm. what sports performance is because now we have AI, right? We mm -hmm. have AI that understands all of these things. So it now means you as an athlete, right? How training used to be done for you as an athlete right now is most likely going to be very very different to how you're going to be training in the next in the next five years, because now. Whenever you want to get strong, you just talk to an AI. It understands the fitness component of training. Whenever you get injured or whatever, you can talk to the AI. Whenever you want to learn a new skill, you can talk to the AI. Whenever you're dealing with any type of mental stress and you're trying to get prepared and actually go through whatever you're going through mentally, you just talk to the AI. It's your personal therapist. Mm. Or whenever you want to get a really good meal plan out of uh, after your workouts or whatever it is after a match game, you just talk to your AI. So where does that leave all of all, all of the sports professionals like myself, who, who who's a, like I coach? Yeah, it's literally it's literally replaced me, right? And from what I've seen with AI, is that it can it can answer questions and give and give suggestions to things way better than any coach that yeah. I've ever seen. It can communicate better. It can give way better advice to our athletes. Like way better than me. Yeah. And I've been, I've been doing this for a very long time. So where does that really leave us? So it now means we as coaches, we now need to seriously really think about our actual, our actual value proposition because we actually do. We provide a service mm -hmm. to our athletes and our clients. And that value proposition comes down to three things. It's the experience that we have, the knowledge that we have and how we use that with the experience and the emotional intelligence. Now AI takes two thirds of this value proposition. It's wiped clean yeah. because it can, it can do it way better than any of us can. And a lot of coaches, every time I, I try to tell coaches this, they're in disbelief. And I just tell them to just go on to Olive right now just to ask them, just to clear their thoughts. They're still in disbelief. Now I'm trying to tell coaches that A, if we don't clean up our act and actually start incorporating AI inside of our workflows. It's done. And yeah. we, not, not, not just the workflows. We also need to clean up how we connect with our athletes. Because mm -hmm. now if you're a bad coach, I know a lot of bad coaches, mm -hmm. a lot of bad coaches who treat their athletes like shit, literal shit. Yeah. Athletes no longer need to deal with you. They no longer need to deal with your nonsense. Wow. They no longer need to deal with your nonsense. They can pretty much just replace you straight blank with an AI and it'll do a much better job at a fraction of the cost because it doesn't cost that much. Mm. Right? You can, you can see I'm like very, very passionate about no, this. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's great. It's like... Hearing, you know, I used to do sports in high school, and I'm friends with a lot of student athletes here at the college, and their the main complaint I see is my coach sucks. Like they do not like yeah, me well, person. Yeah. Well, you should tell your friends to tell your coach that AI is gonna fucking replace them if they don't yeah. fucking clean up their act. <laughs> but I think it's just incredible that you have or have been building something that is so there's a demand for it and there's a need for it and all you have to do it it. Like you, if you could literally just sit down with the head coach or someplace, be like, "Here, like, try to beat this," and they will not be able to under you will any. Not like, beat this. You, you can't. Will not like, it's beat it. you just have you something so valuable, you, you know. And like, I think you've put in the hours and the work, and you know, had the mental breakdowns, but you've come out the other side with something that is growing and adapting. Like, it's it's. I think it's incredible. Like from what I've heard, it's, oh. it seems absolutely. I'm gonna experiment a little bit after this call, but. Dude, it's just so, it's so, in, like, amazing. Like, absolutely, like, I can tell when something, like, you know, from people I've talked to, you know some people have, like, a little spark with them. You, every 100% have that spark. I'm just, I'm excited, I'm, gonna, I'm excited to kind of follow your, your journey and see where you go from here, because, you know, you're only, how old are you right now? I'm 28. Yeah, I'm 28. so, you're, this is about I'm still a... I'm pretty young. I'm still pretty young. Yeah, it's nothing, you know what I mean? Like, 
and you're obviously in good health because you you know how to take care of yourself. And so you got years and years of just this thing that's gonna. I I I won't be surprised if I see it. You know, like an app on my phone. It's like, have you seen this man? Like, I'll be like, yeah, I talked to that yeah, guy. Because like, it's gonna be fantastic. Yeah, no, but the the, the thing is, is that I'm in this very precarious position where a lot of coaches are looking at me as the enemy. Where in mm. actual reality, I'm not the enemy. I am on your side. Yeah. I am trying to create Aliab to help you rather than replace you. Mm. Like, I do not want to see the value of human coaches diminish in the age of AI. I am trying to do my best to mitigate this from happening because I'm looking at what's happening right now within the art community. Just look at it. It's yeah. like, you no longer need to deal with an artist or a designer. You just go on to ChatGPT, Dolly 3, whatever. You just tell it, hey, I want a logo. I want this art image. Pff, done. Yeah. Very quickly. You no longer need to deal with an artist. Now, artists are now just in this, they're in this gray zone now where they're just really questioning their life's decisions. And it's very heartbreaking to see. Now, we are not yet there right now mm -hmm. within sports, but we are... With people like myself spearheading AI yeah. and sports science to where to, to where I see it going in the future, we are absolutely gonna get to that point. And it's gonna be much more destructive than what's going on right now in <laughs> with the art community. I, I don't think words. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna count you. I don't think you should feel destructive because although I I think if you were kind of posing it as a thing, you know what I mean? Like, you have something that is so beneficial that it'd be, it'd be strange, you know, just out of the sake of, you know, human development to be like, oh, I can't, I can't share this because of the potential. I think you have something that's so integral and there has been, I feel like, you know, even thinking back to like, if you think of like a, even a PE coach at the elementary level, they're normally yeah. not the most in, you know what I mean? Like, the, those teachers are... I mean, they, they, they understand things at a base level. Yeah, but think about... <laughs> the just the implications even this is more far-fetched but you know in america there is a problem with obesity and lack of physical exercise so having that information like you know if if someone had told me to start working out you know two years ago three years ago or even when i was growing up because i was a you know overweight kid growing up the amount of lifestyle changes that could have been had from you know having a tool like this just on my at my fingertips is insane like yeah the widespread yeah, and, and, help you could, you, you could and, give and, so much and, and just and just imagine because the way i've developed Ali up right now because you you can constantly see those five pillars mm -hmm. of sports performance constantly on the screen so whenever you're having a conversation with Ali up, you can see how biased you are mm -hmm. with sports performance on these five on these five metrics like are most of your questions to the AI related to fitness? Well, why aren't you talking about why aren't you talking about the other four, mm. right? So it's like now you can actually see because there's there's a there's a pie chart over there where you can actually see how biased you are. But the interesting thing is, is that I've developed Oli up in such a way that it can actually see how biased you are. And now whenever you ask a question, your question could be related to fitness. But it'll it it'll answer your your question to fitness, but it'll find a way to actually squeeze in some of these other topics uh, inside of its question so that it balances you out over time. So I'm trying to balance people out. I'm really turning more into an educational role. Yeah. All of is really an educational tool at its core. It it really is. I think that's because I feel like people who go to the gym will understand you're always learning. Like, even yeah. if you've, even now, like, you know, I've been working out for about a year, and I'm still, you have always feel like, not a beginner, but because you, you know, there are some nuances, things you know, but, you know, I, I recently started training a friend, and just the, seeing the gap, because, he, like, you know, after a year and him just starting, like, the gap in knowledge is this, but imagine yeah, if he, he had this tool, he would be able to get to here in, you know, a week. In a fraction of the time. It, yeah, exactly. It's, a, it's, it's in a fraction really of the interesting. time, yeah. which, is, which is absolutely insane. Yeah, it's, it, it, this is <laughs> mind-boggling. But now we're going to touch on another problem because I do want to touch on a lot of the problems that I'm trying to solve mm -hmm. within sport. There's a lot of misinformation in our industry. There's a lot of misinformation about how to do things the right way, 
and all of these things. So it's like one nutrient, like what supplements and stuff should I really take? Is this really good? How should I train to get like these muscles really big? You talk to some other gym bro over there, he's gonna tell you some false information on how we did these things. You go and talk to this other guy, he's gonna tell you something totally different, which is just not true, mm -hmm. right? You no longer need to deal with all of these people. Yeah. You just deal with the AI. AI is always gonna give you the factual truth. It will never lie to you. It will always give you a very nuanced view of whatever you want to know within fitness or sports performance. So it means we really with AI we can really tackle the problem of the amount of misinformation that's being spread. And a lot of people are now gonna be a lot more informed about the right way of how to actually do things, which I think is very huge. Do do you think like where do you see so you've been working on development for, we'll say around four years. Where do you see in the next four? Like, what, do you, what are your big plans for Ollie Up that you can kind of, I know you have some things you can't disclose, obviously, because there's, you know, things like that. But I'm saying, you know, for the general public, what would you say is your next, you know, you've, I've done the first four. What's your next four? Like, where, where is it going from here? Yeah, so I'll, I'll probably say right now, Ollie Up probably doesn't perform better than me when it comes to making training programs. So coaches right now are absolutely safe. Mm -hmm. Like coaches will know what they're doing with training programs are absolutely safe. They are not going to be affected by Ollie Up right now. But in four years, mm -hmm. after I crack the code with it, with my research, AI is going to understand training programs far better than any human coach. And it's going to make the best is, is pretty much going to create the best training programs that optimize for individual athletes better than any time. When we're pretty much going to get into like this whole new, like the, ne the, the next generation of athletes that we're going to be training within the next four years is going to be, I'm, I'm like really, really excited to see the types of performance that our athletes are going to pretty much achieve within the next four years. But in terms of Olya, of course, Olya is going to do very, very good when it comes to making training programs and the types of answers that it gives you. Mm -hmm. But Olya, very soon, will actually get eyes. So now you'll be actually able to actually take videos of yourself mm. doing specific exercises. Sure. It doesn't even it doesn't even need to be exercises. Yeah, you could you could be a sport coach watching a football game, watching some of your players, you take a video of them and you, you know you how, how they're moving on the field, you give it to Ollie up and you're just like, Ollie up, how could my player here Dude, shut actually up. moved? And what type of new tactics can we develop here as a sport, as pro, a professional sports team in the NFL? How can we improve our tactical game? You mean like from a, like not even like moving past, you know, sports performance, just like from a, strategy point of view uh, yeah strategy point of view <laughs> all app will be able to do that because it now has eyes and it understands all of these things it can pretty much play 4d chess way better than anybody wow. right so it's like i'm, I'm like really really excited you to be. see yeah how things are going to develop right now with ai dude i gotta so kind of coming full circle now so you said you have a lot of things kind of based in open AI or your workflow or how has yes. how will any turmoil with that kind of affect how Ollie Up works? So right now, what gives Ollie Up the unique feel is my deep understanding. Because mm -hmm. you know, I've been I've been studying yeah. the 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 tools AI, like open AI has been giving me for months. Mm -hmm. Like I've been experimenting and I have a very deep understanding of the tools that they've given us as developers to create applications, right? I have a very deep understanding of this. And the code base and the tools that open AI has given us are so intertwined together mm -hmm. because it's from months from testing and understanding that I can't easily Unravel. Untangle. Yeah. I can't untangle things, right? So it's like I'm sort of stuck. Mm. If, if I change a vendor and I use somebody else, it means the unique feel that you get from Oliap is most likely going to be affected. And I really love talking to Oliap. It is a very, very unique, it has a very unique personality. Mm. 
right? And the way that it actually functions, like underneath the hood, because you get, you know, when you're using Olive, you, you don't see what's happening underneath the hood. I know exactly what's happening underneath the hood. And trust me, it is a shit show. <laughs> it is a shit show. I'm actually surprised it works as well as it does, <laughs> if I were honest with people. But anyways, um, of course, I just came out of this heavy development cycle. Mm -hmm. And um, and because I'm working, I've been working on this whole entire project on my own, which I think is unsustainable at this point. I was about to ask, you know, do you have plans to, you know, because you are still working in the college setting. So do you have plans to kind of expand your team? And I know you said you ran into the problem of trying to outsource to people and they really don't have, you need essentially another you. To kind of... I, I, I need another me. Yeah. And finding other me's, and, and it means I need to find somebody trainable because mm -hmm. I can't easily find another me. So I need to find somebody who's willing to be molded mm -hmm. by me. Yeah. So they need to be like super moldable and very open to doing things. This is the only way that I can move forward. But currently, I'm trying to get Ollie up to a very profitable state before I actually look into like hiring yeah, yeah. and bringing other people on board. Because no, right now, because right now I'm I'm mentally burnt out mm -hmm. from developing, so it's like I'm recharging my mental batteries. I'm probably gonna get into another development cycle very soon. So I recently just purchased the new MacBook Pro, the oh, yeah. M3 Max. I'm getting I, one I, I next month. I spec <laughs> I, I spec it out, but I it's, it's, no, it's downstairs. It's it's, it's downstairs. Yeah. It arrived, t it arrived on Thursday. So yeah. I'm like very very excited. Yeah. And I know we haven't talked too much about my research, but yeah, I can't really talk too much about no, it. No, yeah, of course, of course. You, you, you should go and re go onto the website, read the research Yeah, page. I'll make sure to link how it below. I'm go okay. how, how I'm going to solve my current research is the answer is within that laptop that I bought. So mm -hmm. I'm like super, super excited to actually start researching again because I've been heavily bottlenecked by the amount of computational resources that I have. I don't think I'm, I'm bottlenecked anymore. So it's I'm very really happy about it. I do a lot of video editing, and I know that even for a podcast like this, the editing process was starting to get to a point where, you know what I mean, like just, it's like I think there's a lot of, even in business and in life, there's growth and then a constraint, and when you can kind of break down that constraint, the growth is then again, so I feel like, yeah, yeah. especially with just the tools that Apple provides, it's it's gonna be very interesting. I think you know, is because you said you spec'd it out. So do you you have kind of like one of the? Did you get the M three Max or? Oh, uh, yeah, M three Max. Interesting. Okay. M three yeah. Max spec'd out the entire memory. Wow. So you're gonna you have uh, a little monster. I, I, only, I, I only have like I only have like two terabytes because yeah. yeah I think that's enough. That's enough. Wow. Okay. But yeah, I, I got a monster. I got the, I got the monster. I think it's gonna definitely definitely impact the rate of development and. I'm looking. I'm. I know. I'm very excited to kind of follow your journey and see, see where you go from here. Because this is. Oh yeah. This is probably some of the <laughs> coolest shit I've ever heard in a long time, dude. I think you're gonna definitely. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you think so too. Because hey, man, it's it's been a battle. It has it's to been be. a battle, man. <laughs> but I think you're gonna be able to hopefully. It's been a battle. You know, as I grow my platform, I I hope that this podcast. You know, if you are, if you want to be molded, like reach out. I'll link all of his socials below. Like please. You know, like I'm trying to connect people. That's the main reason I started this podcast. And I, I want, you know, if I can somehow help in the growth of all of I'd be ecstatic. So please, if you, That's you know, great. have experience in AI or sport, you know, like just go reach out. I'll, and, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be happy. I'll yeah. be happy to do that. I, I, so do you do YouTube? Is I do, YouTube? yeah. Is this like YouTube? YouTube, Spotify. Um, I promote it on LinkedIn. Like I'm trying to build a social brand right now. And I'm, I'm looking to actually get an editor. So it's, the problem is that, you know, you understand, like, when you are so passionate about something, you have, and being a single, I have a couple uh, employees and contractors, but even then, like, the amount of work to do is always more than the day yeah, allots for. Yeah, a lot more. Yeah, so you have to yeah, be I'm very sure. specific yeah. about what you go and take your time with, so. Give, give me your handles, mm -hmm. like, after all of this, and then I'll, I'll, I'll share it. So it's like, when you publish, when you publish the, the podcast and stuff, I'll I'll share all of your stuff on, on my Twitter. Because I just Thank reached... You. I just reached like a thousand followers. Ooh, okay, yeah, I think I hit five hundred like, last week, like, so it's it's a grind, in like three, but in like in, in like three weeks, so it's like I'm I'm growing quite exponentially. That's great, yeah. So yeah, I'll be I'll be happy to support. 
however they can. No, it's fantastic. I think it's uh, it's been a fantastic talk. I really, really appreciate you coming on and sharing. It's this stuff. I can tell there's gonna be like you ha you're building something of immense, immense value. I can already like just even the I feel in, you know inspired my subject by what you've been able to show me and the fact that it can now the strategy part is incredible. And I would like to have you on again sometime, you know, in, in a year or two years to kind of see where the progression is at. But yeah, that is just, progress. yeah, the that's, progress. dude, thank you. Like so much for coming on. This has been an absolute fantastic talk. Like I, no, I no, really no. do appreciate I, that. No, I, I appreciate you reaching out and, yeah. and wanting to bring me on. I'm, I'm only, I, I, I love talking about, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. love talking about this. I, I, I really, and the reason why I love talking about this, uh, I don't think a lot of people understand is because every time I talk about Ali up in my journey, I learn, mm -hmm. I learn about the journey itself. And I have essentially, um, how, how do I explain this? It's like, I'm further consolidating the amount of information that I have and that I know about Aliab and the vision that I'm trying to go to. So it makes that stronger. So I really do appreciate this. Yeah, no, I think when, like as a closing thought, like when you do go and explain things, like even when I talk about things on a podcast, like just if you can explain it yourself, I feel like you kind of, it's like you're teaching yourself again for the first time. And yeah. I feel like that is so powerful because even when I do coaching calls or consulting calls, when I have to explain my processes and services, those are what kind of solidify them even more in my mind. Yeah. Cause you have to kind of yeah. like simplify, simplify, simplify. Cause yeah. like, you, you know, you had to simplify for me, but even like when I'm doing my, my service stuff, I have to take all this information and, and bring it on this little like one minute spiel <laughs> just to kind of like, you know, open it up. So it, I think it's very, it's, it's going to be incredible. Like, again, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll make sure to you know promote this everywhere. I'll, I'll give you my socials and yeah, man, fantastic. One hundred percent. Well, thank you so much, Jackson, for having me. This yeah. has been great.